Praise the Lord, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Let's stand and worship the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's have some worship this morning and let's praise His holy name. Blessed be His name. Let's sing it out to the Lord this morning, church. Report or anything, please post them on there so that we can see. 
um, your prayer needs and we can pray for you. I also want to remind you this morning, we need to lift up Carol McGraw. Sister Carol's not doing well. She's not feeling well. She's got uh, cold type symptoms and stuff. And we, we really just need to continue to keep Carol lifted up. She's our Sunday school teacher. Amen. And uh, she's also a, a wonderful worshiper. And then when we when she's not sitting, sitting there, you know, we miss her. And I just want you to get, continue to keep Carol lifted up in your yes. prayers. Today, uh, I think Brother John a week ago had a birthday. Yeah, he did. I, I know Dale's coming up, but we're going to get Dale's next week. But, but John's we John's already passed, so uh, he's seventeen. Yes, okay, praise the Lord. So let's sing Happy Birthday to Brother John, Father. Oh yes, I'm here to pray for him. So let's just sing Happy Birthday, to Brother John. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear John. Happy birthday to you. And many more. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm sure Brother John would covet our prayers also if we went to pray for it. So praise, praise the Lord for that. Listen, today is Ladies Bake Sale. If you noticed when you came in, the bake sale table is set up that will go to support the ladies uh, missions project, the House of Cherith. And uh, we just uh, uh, love the support because the, the, the world needs your support. Amen. And that table has been doing a wonderful thing for the, uh, for the, uh, the, the ladies uh, missions project. So praise the Lord. As I shared with you last week, the, the missions jug is still sitting out there that we brought in, uh, over $150 in that jug since it's been sitting out there. <laughs> that's great for missions, isn't it? Yeah. That, that's wonderful. So that's awesome. it's sitting out there still. If you'd like to give your change to it, that would be wonderful also. Uh, this coming Saturday is the fellowship breakfast. We're going to be at the Bob Evans over on 135, just trying new places to go. If you'd like to meet us there at 9 o'clock in the morning, we'd love to have you. Uh, to, to be at Bob Evans, to have breakfast with us. We'll just have a wonderful time of fellowship. I think fellowship is so important yeah. to the believers. We, we ought to fellowship with, with one another. So if you're not busy on Saturday at 9 o'clock, we'd love to have you come out and, to Bob Evans and just have breakfast with us. So praise the Lord for that. Listen, at the end of the month, we are going to have a, uh, at the River of Life, we're having a men's conference. And I've had uh, a few people tell me that they're planning on going, and I and I really need to lock that down today. If there's any men that want to go to the men's conference, it's the last Saturday of the month. You'll see a flyer out there in, in the foyer area for it. The the church is going to cover the cost for your for you going. It is a an all day event on a Saturday, and there's going to be lunch served at around twelve o'clock, around noon. And if you'd like to go, we'd love for you to go with us. And as a as an extra bonus for you going, we want to pour into you. So that, that's a men's conference. Our church wants to pour into you. So we're covering the cost. So uh, please let me know so I can get the total number down and get that all turned in this week so we can be prepared for that. I'd like for us to take uh, uh, as many men as one as want to go. So praise the Lord. And then the very last Sunday of the month, we're going to have an ice cream social. Everybody say ice cream. Ice cream. You scream. We all scream for ice cream. Amen. So we're going to have an ice cream social on the last Sunday of the month. So, um, and then next week's World Mission Sunday. Brother Danny, we're going to be ready to, to share with us uh, what's happening out on the mission field. And we, we're going to get a good opportunity to be able to get to missions again. Brother Tom, you got ushers, do you? Well, bring up your ushers on down and we'll go ahead and prepare for this morning's offering. Praise the Lord. So as they're coming up, I'm going to go ahead and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for this wonderful opportunity we have this morning to be able to just give back to you, Father, just a portion of what you've blessed us with, Lord. We don't take for granted your blessings, Lord God. And there'll be more said about that today, Father. But Father, we just rejoice in your blessings. Every blessing that you give to us, Father, we turn back to praise. We thank you, Father, for those blessings, Lord. But now it's time for us to honor your word. And Father, as we honor your word, we give of our tithes this morning. We give the, the tenth as your word instructs us to, Father. We thank you, Father, for the 90% that you give to us, Lord. 
But Father, that 10% belongs to you. And I'm so thankful, Father, that you've opened up my mind and my heart to that because blessings pour out abundantly when I'm faithful to do what you've told me to do. And Father, as it pours out on me, Lord God, I know it pours out on everyone that is here that we're faithful to do what you tell us to do. We thank you once again for the offering. We ask you to bless the gift and the giver. Father, it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Give us the Lord leads this morning. And let's get ready to just go ahead and sing that next worship song. I have decided that we have gone on Sunday mornings. We're underwork and overpaid. You're underworked and overpaid. Okay. Praise the Lord. <laughs>
supposed to fill up the skies with endless praise. Amen. Praise His name. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Let's give thanks. Anybody thankful this morning? Thankful that you serve a God that loves you, that cares for you, that ministers to you. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord. I'm going to go ahead and dismiss our Hallelujah. praise team. Thank you so much for leading Hallelujah. us into the presence of the Lord. Let's give the Lord a big clap offering of praise. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.
for that. Amen. Praise the Lord. This past Wednesday evening, we connected with the power of God's Word. Everybody say power. Power. How I many of you believe that God's Word has power? Amen. God's Word does have power. God's Word literally has the power to do anything in us and for all of us. Somebody say amen. 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 Yeah. During our connection time, we focused on primarily three uh, different things that the Word of, of God has the power to accomplish in our lives. And the first one was is that the Word of, of God has the power to set us free from addictions. It can break the chains that hold us captive in our lives. No matter what chains they are, the Word of God is actually able to to do that, church. Number two, the Word of God has the power to bring restoration into our lives, to re restore us. And, and honestly, church, I, I believe everyone has something that they need to be restored to. A amen. I, I really do believe that. And then the uh, number three, the third thing was, is that we, uh, we talked about the power that the Word has to give us eternal life. Amen. The power that the Word of God has to give us eternal life. But in that same setting, we have to make sure and understand that we know that, that when there is an eternal life, there's also something called an eternal death. Yeah. Eternal life is set up for those who accepted Christ into their, yeah. his, into their lives. And eternal death is for those who don't. Mm -hmm. Heaven is for those who do. And hell is for those who don't. Plain and simple, right, church? Yes. Plain and simple. Praise the Lord. Even though that we only focused on three different topics, church, the, the list is endless to the number of things that the Word of God has the power to do in people's life. Because God's Word has the power to do anything in us and for us. Yes. Now, now, this morning, I would like to revisit the, the second topic, the topic of restoration. Because I believe that this is a, a very important topic for all of us to hear. Not just the faithful Wednesday evening group that are faithful to be here to, to hear the topics, but the whole congregation, the whole church. Now, church, the word restore, it actually means to reinstate, it means to rebuild, it means to fix, it means to repair and return. With this understanding of what the word restore means, can you see anything at all in your life that needs to be restored? Anything whatsoever. Whether it needs to be reinstated, whether it needs to be rebuilt, whether it needs to be fixed, repaired, or returned. I believe all of us probably have something in our life that would fall into that category. Can I get an amen in the amen. house? Amen. Amen. Many, um, maybe you need your health restored. Maybe you need your relationship with a spouse or a family member or a friend that, that, that needs to be restored. Maybe it's your finances. Maybe it's your place of employment. Whatever it is, the Word of God has the power to bring restoration into your life. Now church, our text this morning says that God will restore the years that the locust has eaten. And that's just a great place to say, Amen. 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 Yeah, because that's what the Word of God says. In this context, the prophet Joel was encouraging the people of Israel to return to God. God had been giving the Israelites a bountiful harvest in all their vineyards and many blessings. But the people of Israel took God's blessings, His bountiful harvest in all their vineyards, they took them for granted. The people had turned their backs on God and was using God's blessing, blessings for unrighteous acts. The bountiful harvest of grace they, were, they would have year after year were being used for drunken acts of unrighteousness. And while they believed in God, they wasn't following after Him. Amen? Is there anybody that believes in God today? But You can, you can tell that, that following after Him is not your strong suit. Amen? 
Think about that one. Joel told them that the locust was going to eat up their vineyards and take away the blessings of God. And that's exactly what was happening. But the prophet Joel testified to the people that God would restore all the years that the locust, locust had eaten if they would just turn their hearts back to God and start following Him again. What, it is, what is it in your life that you need to be that needs to be restored? Better yet, ask yourself this: What, what is the reason it needs to be restored? Have you taken God's blessings, His favor, for granted? Have you stopped following His Word? This morning, church, I'd like to take a look in the Scriptures to see what God told Joel to tell the people of Israel to do to return back to Him for their restoration. Don't you want to know? Yeah. I mean, we, we all want to know and listen, sometime later on, you know, the just three chapters, read them. They're really strong. Read the book of Job and, or Joel and see what, what it has to, to say. But I want to direct your attention to actually chapter 1, verse 14. What Joel says to the people. He says this, Sanctify ye a fast. Call a solemn assembly. Gather the elders and, and all the inhabitants of the land into the house of the Lord. Into the house of the Lord your God. And then he says to them, and cry unto the Lord. And cry unto the Lord. Church, this morning I want to talk to these, these verses here, or this verse and just get you to see and get you to understand how important it is that serving God is a lifestyle. Amen. Serving God isn't just a suggestion right. or something that sounds good in your life. Just Serving God is a lifestyle Amen. where when you receive Christ, old things are passed away and behold, all things become new. The newness is Christ in your life church where everything else needs to be different it needs to be different in your life it's not just a suggestion it's a lifestyle now Joel says this to the to the people of Israel he says sanctify ye a fast Joel says to sanctify themselves what does that mean that means that they are to to be set apart to be declared holy, to set apart, to be used for the kingdom of heaven. To, to not blend in with the world. To touch not the unclean thing. Come on now church, you, you hear what I'm trying to say. To not interact with all of the unrighteous things that are taking place in the world. But separate yourself sanctify yourselves. Joel says to Joel says to sanctify ye a fast. The word fast means to abstain from something for an extended period of time. Most people refer fasting to ab to abstaining from eating. But honestly church it could be from just about anything. Yeah. But the most the majority of it is Eating. On one occasion, Jesus refers to, to fasting in the Scriptures. Now, the disciples were wondering why they could not cast out the demon that was in the dumb man. They couldn't figure it out, but they saw Jesus do it, and they were really kind of um, uh, you know, confused. Why is it that I'm not able to cast out this dumb spirit? Now, church, we... We, you know, I'm not, not trying to be kind of weird or anything, but we do believe in casting out spirits. Yeah. Amen. We, we do believe that, that a spirit can attach itself yeah. to somebody. And, and, and listen, I'm telling you, we need to be ready and prepared to cast that demon out. Yeah. Yeah. Because that demon has no place. Yeah. Amen. Listen, a demon can't curse what God's blessed. Yeah. Right. And remember that. 
And, and sometimes the devil is, is, and I'm not trying to give him any kudos whatsoever, but his main purpose is to deceive. Yeah. Is to deceive. And if he can deceive you into thinking that you've got something on you, then I want to tell you, we need to cast that out. And you need to change your thinking. Because it's stinking thinking. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? But here's what Jesus says in Mark 9, 29. He says this, And He said unto them, This kind can come forth by nothing but prayer and fasting. Fasting, church, is powerful. Amen? Fasting is powerful. When we fast, we are giving up something of importance in exchange to pray. Amen. In exchange to pray. Let's just say, if you're fasting a dinner, take that time that you would be eating that dinner and drop to your knees and pray to God and let that hour go by. Amen. A amen. And just continue to pray for God because you're fasting. You you are are fasting. Instead of instead of do having dinner, just drop to your knees and pray. If your fasting is done with a pure motive, God sees your heart. And the supernatural can take place. Man. Yeah. Because God sees your heart. But you say to yourself, Pastor, I've done this over and over and over again, and, and, and I just don't see God moving in it. And I've done it once, and it just doesn't seem to work. What's your motive? Yeah. Yeah. Amen? You, you see, we don't have to, to try to hide our motives from God because He already knows them. Amen. You're right. Amen. He already Amen. knows those motives. If you want to cast somebody, a demon out of somebody, but yet you want to do it just because you want to be seen as holier than thou, yeah. that's a wrong motive. Right. Amen. That's a wrong motive. Think about it for a moment. Jesus fasted church for 40 days and 40 nights. When He was, was in the wilderness, and after that he done that, the Bible says the devil came to tempt him. Jesus had set Himself apart. He was sanctified and He fasted. Now, here's what it says in Matthew 4, 1 through 3. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when He had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, He was afterward and hungered. And when the tempter came to Him, He said, If thou be, a, be the Son of God, oh, Hear that? If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. Now listen. We know who Jesus is, don't we? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yes. But Jesus still fasted for 40 days and for 40 nights. Amen. He did that. I, I wouldn't you recommend you doing that unless God tells you to. Yeah. Amen. I, now I'm just telling you that. Because the human body can't go 11 days or something without water. Or 7 days. I don't know what it is. But it can't go 40 days without it. You know, you think about it for a moment. If God tells you to do it, He's going to take good care of you. Amen. Amen. And, and you will be able to do it. But Jesus did it. Jesus fasted for 40 days and for 40 nights. And, and you know what? He was weary. He was hungry. Come on, church. Yeah. He was thirsty. Yeah. And the Bible says at the time of his weakest moment, guess who snuck in? Oh, Slewfoot. Mm -hmm. He came into him and he, he tried to throw doubt into Jesus' mind. Can you imagine that? I want to tell you, he can throw doubt into your mind if you let him. If you will let him. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. He tried to say, if you be the Son of God. The devil knew that he was the Son of God. The devil knew who Jesus was. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Yes. Phew, think about if he's going to be that crafty to the Son of God, what's he going to do to you? <laughs> Amen? We, we have the power Amen. of the Word of God, church, to be able to tell Slufa to get back under that rock where he came from. Yeah. Yeah. We have that authority. Amen. Don't we? Yeah. We have that authority. But Jesus, He fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. And He had the strength because here's what He says. It is written. It is written. Yes, amen. amen. Yes. Man shall not live by, by
by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Come on, church. Amen. He gave the word that to Satan. And Satan couldn't attack the word because there's power in the word. Now, now, now church, here's another one. Moses was on the side of a mountain for 40 days and 40 nights. Yes. While God gave him the ten suggestions. No. <laughs> no. You're absolutely right. That's what people today think they are. Today, people think that there's the, there are ten suggestions. Well, they're just suggestions. I can do it if I want to. I don't have to if I don't want to. No. Wrong. God gave Moses the ten commandments. Amen? Moses was set apart. He was sanctified. And he fasted. Because he fasted those 40 days and 40 nights that he was up there. Because he had no bread. And he had no water. He did that. Exodus 34, 28 says this. And he was there with the Lord 40 days and 40 nights. He did neither eat bread nor drink water. What was he doing? Fasting. He was fasting. fasting. Amen? He was fasting. Absolute. Matter of fact, he was gone so long, everybody downstairs yeah. thought that uh, he had died. <laughs> That's wrong. You, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. And I think for Moses, it was just like a blink, probably. The 40 days and 40 nights. It could have been. But for the people down at the bottom of the mountain, they made themselves an idol yeah. and started worshiping it. But we're not going down that road. But Moses fasted for 40 days and he 40 nights. And he wrote upon, here, here, and he wrote upon the tablets the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. Nah. If we want God to restore the years that the locust has eaten, we need to do what the Apostle Paul says. And we need to come out from among, among them and be ye separate, yeah. saith the Lord. Amen. We need to sanctify ourselves. Amen. And we need to fast. Amen. And we need to fast, church. But remember your motivation for fasting. Whatever it is that needs to be restored. Joel says, sanctify ye a fast. And then Joel goes on to say this. He says, to not only sanctify ye a fast, he says, call a solemn assembly. He says, call a solemn assembly. <laughs> he does. The word solemn means to be formal and dignified. And the word assembly means a group of people gathered together in one place. So putting these two meanings together, it means this. A formal and dignified gathering of a group of people in one place for a specific reason. Now this word formal means proper. And it means strict. The word dignified means gracious. Noble, honorable. Amen? That's exactly what that means. Is your restoration that you are looking for, does it mean a, much to you? Does, does it mean so much to you that you would call a solemn assembly? A solemn assembly brings honor and glory to the Lord because, he, because He's what you make the solemn assembly about. You make it about God. Church, you make it about Him. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. In the Old Testament, we see where all the feasts were holy meetings to bring honor and glory to the Lord because they were held in honor of Him. All of the different feasts. Now, if you've done any study in whatsoever, there's several different types of, of feasts. But I'm going to take you to Leviticus 23, 4 first and back up what I said. These are feasts of the Lord. Even holy conversations which ye shall proclaim in their seasons. Now, what are these feasts? Some of the feasts were like the Feast of Unleavened, of unleavened Bread. The Feast of Tabernacles. The Feast of Passover. The Feast of of harvest and many others. 
These were all solemn assemblies that were to bring honor and glory to the Lord. Amen. Today, yes. today there are those things that God has given us to do that should be solemn assemblies. These events that I'm getting ready to talk about were designed to bring honor and glory to the Lord. But many in the world today has completely left God out of them. That's right. Solemn assemblies. Now, what's a solemn assembly? A wedding. A wedding is a solemn assembly. Because a wedding is supposed to bring honor and glory to our Heavenly Father. Amen. 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 Yes. Because God has set it up where one man and one woman, woman come together in holy matrimony. Yes. And because of that, they become one flesh. This is what God has set up. But today, people have taken marriage and they've turned it into an abomination yes. Yes. of the Lord has nothing to do with a solemn assembly. It doesn't bring honor. It doesn't bring glory to our Heavenly Father. Yes. But it might bring honor to the bride. It might bring honor to the bride's family. Come on. It might bring honor to the groom. To the groom's family. Because they, 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 they are, they're leaving God completely out of it. They're having their best friends stand up and perform the wedding because in the state of Indiana, as long as you hold a title, no matter who you are, you can perform a wedding. As long as you hold a title of any kind, amen, you can be the pooper scooper and you can do it. That's your title. Did I say that? I did, but that's what I'm trying to tell you. People have taken marriages and thrown them to the curb. And they're doing all different kinds of things. You can get Elvis Presley today to marry you, marry you if you want to. Just go on into Las Vegas and there's probably plenty of places to perform a, a, a wedding yes. that has nothing to do with a solemn assembly. Yes. Amen? Yes. You have men marrying men and women marrying women, which is an abomination yes. Yes. to the Lord. Amen. It doesn't bring yes. honor. It brings reproach yes. to our Heavenly yes. Father. That's yes, right. Amen? Yeah. Yes. But a solemn assembly brings honor and glory to our Heavenly Father because it's all about Him. Yes. Amen. It's all about Him. Church, there are churches today that won't even read out of the Bible when they preach a message. That's right. Because they leave God completely out of it. There's no more solemn assembly. But we need to understand if we want God to restore within us, His presence needs to be with us. Amen. We can't push His presence aside. We can't push His presence aside, church, and, and tell Him to take a back seat. I'm going to drive today, God. Amen? No. But He needs to be the director of our lives. And when we call a solemn assembly, church, when we call a solemn assembly, it needs to be formal. Yes. It needs to bring honor. It needs to bring glory yes. to our Heavenly Father. And I want to tell you something. He will restore the years that the locust has eaten uh, away from you if you come to that realization that everything that is done in your life ought to be done for the glory of God. Amen. Hallelujah. For the glory of God. Of our heavenly the Lord. Father. Amen? Amen. And then finally, not only did Joel say that we need to sanctify ourselves and, and fast, he, he said to call a solemn assembly, but he, but he said something here that, that really does hit right, right here because we're here in the church. He says this, gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the Lord into the house of the Lord and cry Aloud. Amen. Amen. And cry aloud. 
We can't look at this passage of Scripture as a statement or just a suggestion. This isn't just, listen, not if you want to have, have the, the, everything restored that the locust has eaten. You can't look at this as a suggestion. You have to look at it, church. You have to look at it and understand that this is a command from God. If you want restoration to take place. Listen to what James tells us in the book of James. James chapter 5, starting in verse 14. He says this, Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church, and let him pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he has committed any sin, sins, they shall be forgiven him. He says to confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. The effectual, fervent prayers of a righteous man availeth much. You see that? James makes reference of those who are sick. Now, now, church, it doesn't necessarily mean physical sickness. Amen? Sickness can be mental as well. Amen? Sickness can be something that needs fixed. That needs worked on. Amen? Restored. Absolutely. And, and that's where, where I'm coming. Nonetheless, those that are sick they need to be fixed. They need to be repaired. They need to be renewed. Sounds a lot like restoration to me, doesn't it, you church? Yeah. James says, is any sick among you? Let him or her call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, save, restore, bring restoration. How many of you need restoration? Think about it for a moment. Amen. Yes. James goes on to say, the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed any sins, they shall be forgiven him. Sounds like restoration to me, doesn't it to you, church? Amen. It sure, sure does. Praise the Lord. You, you know, you think about it. You go away from God, things start to happen. You come back to God, and they get fixed. When your car is sick, you take it to a mechanic. When the body needs repaired, you take it to a body man. Right? You take it to those who restore. Humanity needs restoration. And restoration only comes by the presence of the Lord. Amen. And when we walk away from that presence, the locust can attack. The locust can attack. Amen? Amen? If you want God to restore the years the locust has eaten, call the elders and inhabitants of the church gather together at the altar and pray. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. Now church, we have altar calls at this church. And sometimes, listen to me, sometimes people just sit and they don't respond to the altar calls. The elders of the church are ready. Who are the elders of the church? Raise your hand if you're an elder. Come on. You see? Come on. Listen. When somebody comes to pray, we don't leave them up here by themselves. But we come down and we pray with them. We anoint them with oil. And we pray over them the prayer of faith. Believing and trusting that God is going to do. Listen, they're reaching out for God 
to do something. Man. Sister Carol McGraw was telling us that her her niece, her, her her niece was was crying out to her asking for prayer. Listen, she's reaching out. Yes. She's reaching out. For years, the locust has been eating up the things in her life because she's so far away from the presence of God. She's trying to get back to the presence of God. And me sharing this with you today, you can get back to the presence of God. Amen. Amen. Joel promised us that God will restore the years the locust has eaten. But we must do our part for this to take place. Ask yourself these questions. Do you take the favor of God for granted? How about His blessings? Do you take them for granted also? Do you, do you ever really consider that something might be the favor of God even as easy as getting the front row parking spot of a shopping center? Yes. You know? You say that's the favor of God. That's the favor of God. Amen. You get an extra check or check. You get an extra check in the mail. That's the favor of God, isn't it? You know? You didn't know that was coming from work, but you got an extra check in the mail. The favor of God. Amen. Your roof's not leaking after you put a new one on. Amen. Amen. That's the favor. Listen, you can say that that's the favor of God. Yeah. Someone who doubts the favor of God will say, no, that's just my expertise of putting on the roof the way that it's supposed to be put on. Well, at that moment, you just robbed God of the blessing. You better look out. That roof just might start leaking. Who gave you the blessing of knowing that? Absolutely. Think about that for a moment, church. Really, think about that one for a moment. Have you become slack in your prayer life or your Bible study and reading time? Have you stopped following His Word? Listen, church, if you can answer yes even to one of these questions, you might be someone who is in need of restoration. The locust has eaten, has gotten in, and they have started to devour things in your life because of your inconsistency to follow the Lord. You're like what they call a double-minded man or woman. You're up one day and you're down the next. You're like the seeds that's driven by the winds and the waves. Always up and always down. Always up and always down. Think about it. Think about it. But Joel says to return to God and He will restore the years the locust has eaten. Church, sanctify a fast. Call a solemn assembly. And gather the elders and the inhabitants of the land in the church and pray. God will restore the years the locust has eaten. And that church is the power of God's Word. Amen. That church is the truth. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. How many of you are ready to take back what the enemy has stolen from you? Are, are you ready? Yes. Really? Are, are you ready to just march right into the enemy's camp? And say, devil, this doesn't belong to you. Man. In the name of Jesus, it's mine. Man. And I'm taking it back. Amen? Are you ready to take back your health. Yes. Are you ready to take back your finances? Amen. Are you ready to take back your children? Amen. And your grandchildren? Amen. Think, think about it. Yeah. Are you ready to take back what the locust has devoured? If you're ready to take them back, church, let's form Amen. a line on this altar right now with our heads bowed down into the altar, with your knees on the ground, and let's call God. Call on God this morning. And say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise His name.
praise His name. Father, I thank You. I'm going to go right back into the enemy's camp. I'm going to go into the enemy's camp. And I'm going to take back what he has stolen from us. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. I praise you, Lord, for all that you are doing, God. I thank you, Lord, for your goodness. I thank you, Lord, for your mercy. I thank you, Lord, for all that you are doing. For you are so wonderful, God. I praise you. Praise you. Praise you. Praise you. Let's do that right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you right now. We lift up Dolly, Lord. You know what it is that Dolly is in need of Father. And God, we just ask you right now in the name of Jesus to heal her body, Lord God. What the enemy has taken, Father, we're just going to jump in there in the name of Jesus. We're going to take it back, Father. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Thank you, Father, for your mercies. Thank you, Lord, for all that you have done, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you have done, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Oh, yes, God, you are able, Father. Father, I come before you right now, Lord, knowing that, God, that John, Lord, God, has things, Lord, God, that, that, Father, I know that, God, that you are able to touch and able to minister to him, Father. We pray complete restoration, Lord, God, complete restoration in those that are up here, Lord, God, complete restoration, Father, for those that are here, Lord, right now, whatever it might be in their life, what the enemy tries to make for evil, Lord, God, your word says that you will turn it around for good, and Father, I thank you right now. I praise you, God, right now for all that you are doing, Lord God. Father, we know that, God, that you are able. And we stand here completely trusting you, believing, Lord God, for all, Lord God, for your word, Father, for the power and the strength of your word to restore, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Church, the Holy Spirit is moving. The Holy Spirit is ministering right now to us. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for what you are doing, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. For you are worthy of all praise. You are worthy of all glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Father, we praise you. Father, we thank you, God. For you are so worthy, God. You are so worthy of all praise. You are worthy of all glory, God. You are worthy of all honor. Lord God, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Keep praying, church. Keep praying. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You're so worthy, God. Worthy is the Lamb that was Worthy is the Lamb that was slain. You're so worthy, God. Worthy of all praise. Worthy of all glory, God. You're so worthy, God. Worthy. Thank you. Pray for one another, church. Pray for one another. Thank you, Jesus. Yes,
God, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you, Lord, and we praise you, Father, for all that you're doing. We know that, God, that you are able, Lord. We know that, God, that you are able. We just ask you to touch Carol Morrall, Father, and minister to her, Lord. God, we know, God, whatever it is, Lord God, that's trying to attack her body, that, Father, you're greater than that, Lord God. And Jesus, you are the great physician. And we stand right now completely and completely know, God, that you are God that's in control. Touch her, Lord, and minister to her, Father. We thank you. We praise you for all that is done. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Paul, oh, take this to her. Let her know that we've been praying for her. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God is certainly able. Amen. God is able. Praise the Lord.
I've got a praise report what's for, praise, for praise. Aunt Georgia. Okay, what's the praise she report? Has for praise, Aunt she prayed and prayed and prayed when Jenny's cat left. Mm -hmm. It would it left. They lost it on June, like June twenty third. Uh -huh. and, and they thought maybe the coyotes got it. Mm -hmm. Well, um, some lady called Jenny, and she had her cat. Well, and so the long. cat is at home now. Well, that's okay. wonderful. And Georgia has been praying for this cat to come home all this yeah. time. That's and wonderful. the other day it came home. Oh, nice. Yeah, we got to go get it, bring it home. Well, that's wonderful. Yes. Praise the Lord. So, anybody so, else yeah, have a prayer report? Well, we should pray. All right. Well, let's pray over these. Let's pray over these elements. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you with these elements in our hand, Lord. Knowing that, God, that, that you uh, know our hearts and you, you know where we are in life right now, Lord. I just thank you for this opportunity that we get, Lord, to be able to just share with you, Father, in communion this morning, Lord God. We, we ask you to, to bless the bread, Lord, to, to bless the juice. And, and God, we'll, we'll just thank you, Lord, for this outward testimony of the inward heart that we've received you. And that, God, that, that Father, that you will be with us wherever we go. We thank you and we praise you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. On the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and broke it. He said, take, eat, this is my body that's been broken for you. Let's do that. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And in the same manner as he sucked, he took the cup. And he says, this is the cup of the new covenant that we are now under. That whenever we come, <coughs> we're to remember what it is that he's done for us. Yes. Amen. Amen. Bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. <coughs> Hallelujah. <coughs> Praise the Lord. Praise One of our newest pastors in the state, he's the son of a, a pastor that's been with us for quite some time, but he now he's actually pastoring a church. Him and his girlfriend, they, they got married a few weeks back. And um, watched a little bit of it on Facebook. And it was the most blessed spiritual wedding that I've ever seen in my life and ever heard of. I meant they even spoke in tongues during the message. That's how, or during the, the, the wedding ceremony, that's how spiritual it was. And um, we, we need to understand that, that God still needs us to have solemn assemblies. Amen. It all has to bring glory. It all has to bring honor to Him. Amen. Amen. And, and when we do this, when we fast, when we, we bring a solemn assembly, when we call for the elders of the church, we're doing everything that the Scripture tells us to do, church. And we're trying to get back to the presence, to where we put God first in our life in everything. We need to know that we need to do that. Amen? Amen. All hearts and minds clear this morning? Well, all right. Let's don't forget about the latest bake sale that is out there. Y'all dismissed. Have a wonderful day. Amen? Amen. Amen.